Okay, one little thing I remembered as well. If we, when we do this, the preprocessor will, will replace what we type there with this, which is fine. Um, but if profiling is not turned on, I want to, I want to help the compiler as much as possible vaporize the profiler code. So what I'm actually going to do is grab this, Control C, and do another check here. You can see here it's hard to. You don't want to get too complicated with the preprocessor because it's like, oh, we got this, and it's kind of not lined up as far as scope and indentation, and oh, what a pain. So I'm going to say, hey, if profiling's turned on, yeah, pound define profile, profile to be all this stuff, pound else, pound define profile category to be nothing, pound and if. All right, so when we type this, we turn off profiling on, then uh, basically all these will, every time we call profile, it will be replaced with absolutely nothing. So a little more help there. Let me control or file, close that window. And here we go. I want to I actually use this. Let's see if it works. I'm going to bring that back in. Looks good. Control C, Control V, Control Shift B, build started. Build succeeded. Okay, let's uh, let's run this. Let's see what happens and uh, see if we can profile. Looks like we're profiling two things: the multiplication uh, combined with the assignment, and then we are more interestingly, I want to profile multiplying that matrix against all the verts. Now I'm going to make a hunch here. If you remember back when we even wrote the clock class, we discovered that my CPU, when I say get the high performance counter, I don't get a very granular level. So even though, yeah, we're using the high performance counter, I'm going to bet that we don't really measure anything significant here because, yeah, we're doing some float multiplications with some additions, but uh, I, I, it's really not that much, to be honest. It's it's numbers right now is set to three. <laughs> There's only three of them, so uh, I'd be surprised if we actually measure something. This will the profile will become much more handy. We'll use it a lot. Okay, there's when we do graphics and artificial intelligence and physics and those kind of things. Yeah, we want to profile and know what's going on. So this is not. Oh, let's just run it. Let's see what happens. Control F five. Oh, the tests are running. I don't want to run the test. Let's go, in fact, the long-running tests we're running. So I think if I... Well, didn't we have some... We had for the clock test. That's right, we had the overnight test. I'm going to comment that out. Save it, close it, close it, close it, close it. Right-click here, set a startup project, Control-Shift-B, build succeeded. Let's run this. Okay, and... Wow. <laughs> oh, that hurts. That's <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that's bad. That's so bad. <laughs> uh, Q widget repaint recursive paint direct. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't laugh. I should probably be more professional. <laughs> It's the middle of the night, and <laughs> my program just blew up on me. If you can laugh at that, you're probably doing pretty good. <laughs> oh, I'm going to pause the recording, figure out what's going on. I have a hunch, though. I've seen this recursive repaint detected. Um, my hunch is that we're stomping on memory somewhere, and that's bad. So let me pause the recording, see if I can figure out what's going on here. Okay, I still haven't found the problem, but I didn't really spend much time on it, because as I was getting into it, I thought, oh... I really need to show debugging techniques, finding the problems, and even though they make this playlist series long, um, I think it's very useful. If you want to skip over it, that's fine, but I tell you what, it is so frustrating when a new programmer comes to me and says, I can't figure this out, and I say, well, okay, what have you tried? It's, it's just broke, I can't figure it out, and it's like, Wah! okay, so... I think it's important, probably more important, to teach debugging skills. Now, I don't know what the problem is, and it'll probably take me a while to find it. I want to skip over it? That's fine. That's your choice. Um, first of all, my debugging hat turns on and says, well, this program wasn't blowing up until I did all that profiling stuff. All right, my profile tests still pass, I hope. Um, maybe I need to go execute them. So, And also, I also committed another sin. We made that auto profile class. 
but we um, didn't write any unit tests for it. We definitely didn't unit test before we wrote the auto profile class. Oh, I'm such a sinner. Uh, let's go to that profile class anyway. I just want to glance at it for a minute. Initialize, start, stop, add entry. Part of the reason why, oh, did you notice I didn't use the category here? Category. I should probably fix one problem at a time, but I'm just going to notice that while I'm here and fix it. We didn't have any problems really until we introduced this thing, so I wonder if I just comment that out for now. Run it, control F5. Let's see if we get the problem. Right. Oh, my ship's back. All right. But notice if just with that one little tweak and a little bit of intuition, hey, I just changed this and my program's not running. Hmm. I bet what I just changed caused a problem. That's my thought process there. Um, so I know the problem's right here. So that fast, without having to do it offline, I was able to kind of isolate the problem. So let's uh, let's go here and uh, go here. I'm gonna now I'm doing kind of binary search. I'm gonna say let's initialize the clock. Let's start it up. Uh, don't worry about this part for now. I bet the problem might be in here, maybe, but we unit tested this. Yeah, whatever. Let's just if I run it and the program blows up, then I know there's a problem in here somewhere. But if the program doesn't blow up, then I know the problem's probably down here. Control the five, build it, run it. Looks like I'm flying around. Very good. Okay, so now I know my problem's most likely in here. So let's just see if we can do this by itself. Control F5. I'm going to assume that should work properly. That's fine. Good. So then we have to say profiler dot add entry, and I bet we will get the blow up. And now my hunch says, hmm, did we initialize the profiler? Properly, let's go to. Let's go to. Do you like it when I sing like that? Um, my GL window, that's CPP. And where do we initialize? Profiler. Dot enter. Initialize right here. Let's. Uh, do I call this function? I hope. Put a breakpoint there. F five. Sure enough, we hit the initialize. So that should be good, shouldn't it? I want to make sure we initialize before we try doing any profiling. So I'll put a breakpoint here and hope I hit this breakpoint before I hit this breakpoint. Because I know if I'm adding an entry before I initialize, that's not good. So F5, and sure enough, we initialize. And then we add an entry. So let me just, uh, I'm going to, oh, let's get rid of the registers. Control Shift F9 to get rid of all the breakpoints. And let's just step in here and see if, see if we're doing anything fishy in there. So last last lap time, yep, F11, get the instance, good. Add entry, assert category index, good. Profile category, category index. Uh, assert the name. Oh, that assert blows up. <laughs> I'm actually feeling kind of proud of myself. You wanna know why? We did not have to write this assert. Okay. Um, however, because I put that assert in there, we immediately uh, got stomped in the face. Now, the part where we failed at was if we had our own assertion system, um, we could have put an error message in here and popped an error message in my face and said, hey, there's a problem here. Um, you checked this condition, Jamie. This condition wasn't true. Uh, it's right here, figure it out, all right? But when we just run this and says, you know, the debug's like, oh, come on, give me at least one of them. Well, you can't really see it, but it just says, debugger, abort's been called, abort or retry, and so, so this current assertion system stinks. <laughs> it's not giving us any real good errors, and it definitely, I just thought it was stomping on memory, because I've seen that window several times, and I tend to stomp all over myself. So we need to, I need to take some notes. Hold on, let me get my note pad up here. Bring this here. Um, some things we need to do. We need to set up build, set up build configurations. We need to make a custom, custom assertion system that logs intuitive errors. 
And I thought there were some other things we needed to do. And I'll probably come to mind. I'm going to put that to this side just so I can remember we need to do that. So let me control shift F9. We don't have any breakpoints. Good. Put a breakpoint here. Let's run. And let's check out this assertion while we have paint issues here. Uh, what's going on here? Name. Oh. Huh. Ow. Oh. <laughs> do you remember writing this code? I do. We, we said, hey, uh, on the first frame, we're just going to track all the... Uh, track all the uh, category names, all right, but on subsequent frames or not. So frame index is zero. Well, when should frame index not be zero? It should be on the initialize, but we call it initialize. So why, if we call it initialize, why is frame index not zero? In fact, it looks like it's a really big number. If I go here, uh, let's do the watch window. And grab frame index, bring it down here, right click, hexadecimal display, look at that. Frame index is all ones. Right, if you don't understand binary and hexadecimal, uh, check out the binary and hexadecimal playlist. And if you really want to get gnarly with the CPU, go check out the assembly programming playlist. But you can see here, all the bits are turned on. In fact, when I hovered over that, uh, let me turn off hexadecimal display. When I hover over to that, I had a hunch because I think I've I've seen this number several times. I remember kind of the 4294 part of it. At least I recognized it thinking, hmm, I've seen that number before. And that's because, yeah, I've seen it in its hexadecimal form, which is all the bits are turned on. Anyway, just a little, little uh, debugging tricks there. What? Why is frame index... Not negative one. We set it to negative one when we call initialize. I'm going to put a breakpoint there. Uh, Shift F5, stop the debugger. Let's go back to my GL window. I'm going to put a breakpoint here again, even though we know this executes before the add entry was called. And I'm going to go back over here, put a breakpoint on add entry. So I have three breakpoints. I really just want to make sure these breakpoints are hit in the order that I think they should be hit in. Let me hit a five. And sure enough, frame index will set that to a negative one. Duh. <laughs> All the bits turned on is a negative one. Oh, you know what we forgot to do? We forgot to call new frame. Oh, Jamie, you're epic. So, there's a couple ways to look at this. One, wow, Jamie, it's your fault this blew up. And my fault, meaning you should have remembered to call new frame. All right. Uh, we didn't call new frame. Not in the game, at least. We did in the unit test, but we didn't do it in the game. But then another part of me is like, you know, so it looks like it took about nine minutes to figure this out. That's about how long we're at in the recording. And it probably would have been a lot faster had I not been recording, maybe five minutes. But had I not set up this, this debug stuff down here, at least this at the bare minimum, and I didn't turn on my debugging hat, then that five minutes of debugging could turn easily turn into hours. You know, one hour, two hours, if I'm not thinking and tweaking and having an idea of what I need to change. You can see I incrementally move forward, and I test driven development, I test, and, and I... When I change something, I get immediately get an error. I immediately get that feedback from my code. Then I know, well, I just changed this thing. We changed the auto profile thing. and That's the context we're in. And so by setting up these safety mechanisms for me as a programmer, yeah, it takes time to set that stuff up. But then it also saves time in the long run. Because this could have easily turned into maybe half hour to an hour of debugging. Um, anyway... I'm sorry, I'm on my soapbox. Let's call a new frame. So Control Shift F9, delete all breakpoints. Uh, go here, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Where's update clock lap? After we lock, call, lap the clock, I think right here would be a good place to say, hey profiler dot. We're on a new frame. All right, Control F5. Let me get rid of this one here. My Visual Studio is locked up. Give me a sec. Okay, I think we're back. Control F5. 
Build started. Build success. Oh, we're still getting there. Well, now I'm getting frustrated. Let me put a breakpoint there. F5, F11, turn the instance, frame index, assert category, and I'm using categories. Yep, that looks good. Frame index plus plus. Let's put the breakpoint back here. F5, F5. That's interesting. That's interesting. It looked like we hit this breakpoint twice before hitting this breakpoint once. And I didn't expect that. I expected to hit this once, then this once, and this difference in font size. This is driving me nuts. Let me F5. I'm just, I hit Shift F5. I'm going to start the debugger back up. Restart the whole thing, essentially. Profiler new frame. Profiler new frame. And then we get the assertion. Oh. I think I know what's going on. And now look, we're hitting this. Yeah, I know what's going on. Um, so we're not hitting the breakpoints consistently. We hit this one like, well, first we hit this one twice, then we hit this one like five times, then we hit this one once. And what should really happen is hit this one, hit this one, hit this one, hit this one, back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, back and forth. Um, but that's obviously not, is not what's happening. So let me tell you what's going on and I'm going to fix this in the next video. But, uh, we have this my update that is being called. If you remember, we called this Control Shift F Enter. We hooked this up uh, on a timer, that Q timer. We said, "Hey, Q timer, go, 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 time, 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 time," um, which is good. But then we also call repaint. Where is it in my update? So we say repaint. Well, other things can cause the window to paint besides us saying to paint. All right. For example, while we're debugging, popping between, alt tabbing and popping between the window, and I, I, I honestly don't know all the things that can cause a repaint. But essentially, the paints are happening a lot more than our timer is. We're and we're kind of jimmy rigging this a little bit by having this timer set up these events in the queues, and then the paints get in the queue. And I think I'll talk about that in the next video why that is. But Long story short, we're not consistent. We don't have a consistent game loop. We need to update, paint, update, paint. And I'm not sure if that's going to fix this bug or not, but I can see we have an issue there. And by fixing that issue, we could consistently debug the other bug. Um, either way, we'll figure out what the other bug is. Long video, sorry. Next video, keep debugging.